Hey, how you doing? This is Steve with Black River Productions. Today we're gonna to talk about a little bit of tuning. I've got a couple of different heads here we can go with, uh, different styles of tuning. Uh, rock drumming, generally these days, tends to be a little more dampened head. Jazz drumming is always sort of a big head tuned way up, single ply. And so we're gonna talk about a couple of different ideas on how you tune each one of those and frankly, some ideas on how much you have to do. So we've got an Evans hydraulic head. That's a two ply head with a little coat of oil in between to help dampen it out real nice. I've got a Remo pinstripe, which is a very classic head for decades. It's two ply and has a little bit of ring on the outside, a little bit of dampening there. And then on the bottom of both of these drums, where we've got a Remo Ambassador, which is a pretty standard bottom head. It's a single ply head. And so we're gonna go through a couple quick ideas of how you wanna tune these drums. The hydraulic heads tend to be a lot easier to work with in that once you get them tuned, you can bang on them a little bit. And even if they fall slightly out, they, it, it still sounds really good. And so you can get through gigs uh, recording sessions, that type of thing, but it has a very muffled, sort of dead, dry sound. Not a lot of resonance there. The pinstripe, a little bit more free, a little bit more ambient. You can hear that bigger, fuller sound. This would be like a jazz setup, would have a drum that would sound like this. Whereas a lot of rock drumming, I mean, even uh, the uh, Dave Matthews, Carter Beaufort plays with the hydraulic head. It's always dead. When you hit that thing, it's a tight hit. You're on to the next one. A lot of the speed metal guys, that type of thing, they like this type of setup. As far as your bottom heads go with the single ply, they're gonna go, they're gonna be a lot freer, more open. In this case, this head, we were trying to deaden out a little more, so we went with a gel. Can't get it dead enough in some situations, you know? But you can hear how open that is. And then when I put a gel on it, tightens it way up. So neither one of these drums have been tuned. You have a decent ear, you know already. But we're gonna flip them over. Already did that. Gonna flip it over, sort of work around the head. So when you're tuning a drum, the main thing is you wanna get each one of the keys the same tension on the head. So it's pulling the same amount and that's what's gonna get it in tune. You're looking for a specific note on every one of these. And so as you hit the first one, you hit the second one, you hear a difference, that's not good. And so when you're tuning these, you wanna go around the head, right where the keys are, about an inch to two inches off, and you can use your finger sometimes to help with some of the overtone, that big booming ring, uh, right? So if you put your finger on there a little bit, you can get some of that overtone out of there. Okay, so I've got three that sound similar and three that don't. This is one we don't. So we're gonna get our drum key. We're gonna give it a little tweak. Sounds a lot better already, just between these two. Now what throws a lot of drummers off, especially when they're new and they're just getting into tuning, they don't really understand. You're hearing overtones and things warbling, notes clashing, because some of the other ones might be way out. And so when you're tuning a drum, it's important to, if, if, it's, if every one of these is real, one's really tight, and one's really loose, it, sometimes it's a good thing to just take them all down, 
uh, loosen them all up, start over, sort of finger tighten them all, get them all right to where you think they're even, and then start with a quarter turn, a half a turn of the key, maybe a full turn or two, depending on how tight and how, how bright you want that drum to sound. And so in this case, I've got these two are pretty similar. I know these two are pretty similar. This one's a little flat, so we need to just play with it. That one was a little sharp. So you go around it, it gets a little better. This head is very similar. It's also an ambassador. So we're not gonna play with that too much. I'm gonna put this here and go through that again so we can get an, an overview. You wanna hit the drum in these specific spots, pretty close to the each key. You don't wanna be hitting it over here, then you're getting the tone from both spots. So you wanna work your way around the drum as such. I always start with the bottom head. The bottom head should always be, in my opinion, a little bit tighter. Lots of drummers have different opinions. So there is no right or wrong here, but in my opinion, you want that bottom head to really vibrate when that top head pushes that sound wave into it, it's really gonna vibrate and sort of enhance the sound. I tend to like my top heads, my batter heads, a little looser, which if I'm playing some jazz type of stuff, makes it a little harder to get the doubles in and that type of thing and really accentuate the sound of the drum. In those situations, I'll tune them up a little bit, get a little higher pitch. When I'm doing rock drumming, it's a lot of single stroke rolls. I'm not as worried about that. I know I'm gonna get the attack I need out of that drum. So I'm just gonna go through this pinstripe head. Again, it's a little muffled on the outside. Ooh. We got a bad one there. together you'll have when you have your drum kit set up you get to playing you run around that kit a bunch of times you whack the rim with your stick you're gonna act that head's actually gonna loosen up faster than say the one on the other side of the drum that you're not ever going attacking that rim at all and so it's always a good thing to sort of work around you're gonna have these clusters of these two that you go around the kit and all of a sudden there's this one here and this one here those two are always loose more loose than the other one, so. That is not a completely tuned drum. It could absolutely be gone through again, but it gives you for our purposes here today, it gives you an idea of what I'm looking for. Now, I would go through all that again and fine tune and fine tune until I really get it the way I want it. What I'm talking about here today is tuning by ear, mostly. There's, of course, products on the market that you can go, you know, uh, it'll dial that tension in exactly where you want it on each head. And those products are great. And they make life a lot easier, especially if you're touring, or you're working in a studio and a, a band comes in and they haven't messed with their drums much and you need to sort of, you're on the clock, you gotta get to it. Those things are great to get you close, but sometimes you run into a bad bearing edge. Sometimes you run into a drum that's a little misshapen and being able to use one of those, some of that new technology to get it real close you still need your ear to really refine that thing so that when it comes, plays back to you after your recording, or those folks that are hearing it at that live gig, they're getting a truly tuned drum. So I've talked about the Ambassador and the Pinstripe. I'm gonna just real quick go to this hydraulic. <clears throat> I love these heads for a lot of different types of music, especially when I was touring. 
because it makes it so much easier to tune. They tend to be a little bit harder because they don't have that big overtone. When I'm hitting on it, especially when you're tuning, of course, you wanna have the one head muffled, the alternate head to the one you're tuning. I mean, you can hear it. There's there's barely anything there to, to really listen to. When I hit the, the head overall, we're gonna get rid of this. Whoop. Probably gonna break some stuff every once in a while. It's such a dry sound, you're not getting enough overtone on it to really clue in hearing wise. So it makes it even more important to have a decent sense of how to go through each one of these and get them right, especially if you have a little, again, with the bearing edges, your bearing edges might be a little off. Uh, obviously these, these instruments are acoustic and so you get heavy humidity one day and super dry two days later, it's gonna have an effect. And so you need to be able to sort of fine tune them even when you put something on it, uh, uh, like a drum dial, for example, which we'll be uh, demoing soon. When you do that, it you have to have that ear. To be able to tune these things in and get them real close. So anyway, I hope that helps. Please hit uh, like and subscribe if you like what we did here today. We're gonna do plenty more here at Black River Productions. Todd and Mike are always around to answer questions and those types of things. So I'm glad to be here and really thankful that they gave me this opportunity. Thanks guys, metal.